Jeff Peterson from Heartland Farm Partners is our market analyst this week. The USDA's July crop report maintains the agency's expectations of large crops come harvest. It's forecasting record yields in corn and a record production in soybeans. Monday's crop progress report showed the highest percentage of corn in good to excellent conditions during the month of July since 2004 and the best soybean conditions in July since 1994. Jeff joined us Friday morning to analyze how markets have reacted to the latest numbers. The USDA is seeing exceptional crop conditions across the country. What's your sense of how crops look around this region? You know, as you look at Nebraska, I'd say south of I-80, if they hasn't got hit by a storm, really looks pretty good. However, as you move into northeast Nebraska, it just depends on whether or not the storms hit you or not. If the storms didn't hit you, corn and beans were off to a very good start. But if you got hit by them, you know, it doesn't look so good. But I still think it's good enough to still come in alignment with what USDA is thinking on yields. Right, and in its uh, July crop report, it's seeing record yields still in corn and it bumped up soybean production. Are you guys in line with those thoughts? You know, we are. Um, even though conditions are not perfect mm -hmm. all across the U.S., I think they're good enough. As a matter of fact, we're taking our corn yield, you know, USDA is 165.3. We're actually moving our yield towards 170. We're not quite there yet, but that's where we're headed. And on soybeans, soybeans are a 45.2. Um, I, I think uh, well, there's probably another bushel higher in that yet. I think you could very li likely see 46.2 or 46.5 yet with the conditions we have. All right, with these things being said, the markets are drastically different from the last time we've talked and uh, farmers are probably wondering now, is there a chance I can get a bounce back in either market? Yeah, there, there is and that's kind of what we're seeing right now. When the report came out last Friday, um, on the 11th, uh, what we ended up seeing is the funds ended up putting in a bottom on the beans. We went down to 1065 and we've bounced back up higher since then. Corn, you know, we continued a little bit lower um, out to July 15th and then put in a low and then we've bounced higher from there. If we continue to get some heat, we'll, we'll see a little bit more of a bounce. But Jeff, if we don't get some more heat, and if that cha forecast changes, then we'll see prices continue to grind lower. Specifically heat to the east and not necessar necessarily heat here? Well, that, that'd be the thing because yeah. I know we've got heat in the forecast here, but what we'd have to see is we'd have to see more heat than that. We'd have to see that heat intensify at that level we're talking about for Nebraska, mm -hmm. keep it here longer, and then move it further east. Tell me where the fund positions are right now. Yeah, the funds right now, surprisingly, they're still long about 70,000 contracts of corn. They're short about 12,000 on the bean side, and they're short about 50,000 contracts on the wheat side. So did that come into play uh, when we saw continued unrest in Ukraine and tension and disaster there? Uh, wheat sort of got a little ride from that. Is that sort of playing in as well? Yeah, it did, exactly. So as soon as there was thoughts of uncertainty that was happening about that Malaysian flight and what's happening over there in Ukraine, that definitely, you had the funds come back in and start buying back their short positions. And, that, and that's what gave us a bounce in wheat. And that's why we didn't see the same strength in corn and beans. Where do you see corn and beans bottoming out? Yeah, and we get that asked question mm -hmm. all the time, you know, to us. And, and we're really, our target right now, 371 is what we're looking at on corn. And we believe $10 is very possible on beans. If conditions continue as they are, maybe get a little bit better, a little more moisture, you could see prices go below that. But that's our current targets. When do you think that happens in beans? Is it during the U.S. harvest or is it when we still look to Brazil and think about whether or not they'll have another record harvest. Yeah, and that's a great point, and I'm glad you really brought that up. Um, I think the numbers that we've laid out there, and particularly focusing on soybeans, um, that would still be for the U.S. side. If for some reason we would see a big crop in South America, which it sounds like it could be, um, we don't know, we'll have to see how they get, what they get planted, but if they get a big crop, I think you could end up seeing prices lower. It could be 50 cents lower than that if they have a big crop. The prices you're talking about now and, and the guys you work with specifically, uh, does that threaten break-evens? Are we close? Are we above? Are we below? Yeah, that's what's very concerning here, Jeff, is as we evaluate break-even numbers, um, even for guys who have made some good sales, um, you know, we're, we are way below break-even levels on price. August crop report expectations? Yeah, as we look at the August crop, what we have to realize is that this will be the first survey based where actually you've got uh, USDA officials, NASA officials out in the fields looking at estimates. I think we'll see them bring yields up. I wouldn't be surprised to see us raise the corn yield a couple. They won't go all the way to 170. Maybe bring it up a couple bushels on corn and bring it up a half to three quarter bushel on beans, I think is possible.